Uh, thanks, guys, for having me. I'm Marcus Weller, founder and CEO of Scully. Um, it's a huge honor to be in this room with uh, such an esteemed group. I feel a little bit underdressed. We call this a, we call this a Minnesotan tuxedo, so. <laughs> um, I thought I'd just tell you briefly uh, a quick story about kind of the impetus behind Scully because it kind of provides a little bit of a context and a framework. So uh, back in 2011, I was on my motorcycle in Barcelona, and I was on my way to an appointment. And I looked to my right to read a street sign, but because I was doing that, I hadn't noticed that this little red smart car in front of me had actually slammed on the brakes. So by the time I looked forward, I was already smashing into the back of the car. And I ripped my palm off and totaled the bike and my ego. And uh, I, it, was, it was a pretty jarring experience, to say the least. Um, but what, what bothered me over the ensuing six months was that I wasn't like I was texting. You know, I, w I wasn't texting on my motorcycle. I was reading a street sign. I mean, that's what they're there for. You know, and that caused my accident. So it was a Wednesday night in May of 2012. I was uh, working uh, as a, an industrial psychologist at a semiconductor company. I know that's a mouthful. I'll explain later. <laughs> and uh, I had this dream that I was back on the motorcycle that day. But the difference in that dream was that I had GPS maps, and they were floating out in front of me like a hologram. And because I was looking forward and not looking at the street sign, I saw the little red smart car. I saw the brake lights illuminate, and I just swerved around it. And I didn't get in the accident. And that woke me up. That pattern interrupt just woke me up out of a dead sleep. I sat up in bed, and I pulled out my laptop. And I said, I'm buying this right now. I don't care what it costs. I don't even care about the fact that I don't own a motorcycle right now. I'm going to buy this. And uh, the problem was that it didn't exist. So I realized that I was going to have to, if I, if I wanted to own it, I was going to have to build it. Um, I, little did I know how challenging that endeavor would be, but um, I'm, I'm going to share a little bit with you about some of the things that we've been working on lately. So I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. technology should be seamless, and it should give you more from the experiences you love. Our technology fundamentally enhances human capability. from Sarah. Turn left in 20 miles. So what you, what you saw there is that it's a heads-up display that focuses at infinity. So it takes telemetry, so meaning gauges, GPS navigation, and 180 degree viewing angle rear view camera. So it's basically a blind spot camera. It sees around you. It's what the military calls situational awareness technology. It renders that all in a heads up display. So it's very easy to see. By infinite focus, what that means is that when you're looking far away, the image appears in focus when you glance at it. When you're looking at something close up and you glance at the image, it's perfectly in focus again. It's the equivalent of um, never needing reading glasses when things are close up to your face. Uh, and basically, I wanted to share with you a little bit about the trajectory and, and what's happened with the company along the way and our progression. So uh, since we made that little video, um, we actually launched a around this time last year at, at Demo. And Demo is a, is a forum where VMware and Salesforce launched uh, and a number of other household names now. And we, we won a Demo God Award there. And before we, we won that award, about 500 people knew about what we were doing. And at the end of that weekend, about 20,000 people had filled out a form and written us an essay 
um, which is the requirement to apply as a beta tester uh, for our product. And uh, since then, over 150,000 people have done that. Um, we, we had some great media coverage. Most importantly, Popular Mechanics. Um, was, a, was a huge like, geek fantasy of mine since I was a kid to be covered in Popular Mechanics and to do something that would, would warrant that prestigious of uh, media coverage. Um, we, we won some awards along the way, including a Best Innovation Award from CNN, and then we were able to subsequently raise a $2.5 million seed round. Uh, and so even by Silicon Valley standards, that was a large seed round, and we realized that uh, not only was this you know, a cool product, something that we felt passionate about, but that uh, there was a business behind it. So we kicked off a, an Indiegogo campaign to validate quantitatively what the product market fit was. Uh, and so you know, do we have the right price, do we have the right product, and are we addressing the right market? Uh, we raised $2.8 in that campaign and set uh, records. We, our, our goal was to get to uh, a quarter million, as I mentioned. We did that in six minutes, launching at 6 a.m., and uh, set that record. And we also were the fastest company ever to a million dollars. Um, since then, I mean, it's been obviously a, a very wild ride, and uh, it's really been a thrill to be able to share this with you guys today. So thank you very much. Are those people all backlogged, or are you in market? Are you product in market? We've, uh, we've pre-sold the product, so $3 million worth of product in 47 different countries. Pre-sold? Yep. You're not people wearing these on highways today? Not ones you've that got we the advertise. Ca you've got the cash, they don't have the helmets. Yeah, we, we have uh, about 30 good, beta good, testers. Good, good business model. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, though, it's for, from a working capital standpoint, as a, as a startup, when you're doing something yeah. capital intensive, the, the way to go is definitely pre-sales if the market will, will bear it. So, the, so yeah, we watch the tape. It's cool, right? It's what I, it's what, what I watch. And, um, so we don't know if it really does all this. These people who gave you the money ahead of time, uh, this are you is confident a, that all the tech that comes into this actually works? How did you convince people, and, and how, what percentage of it's real? So this is, a, this is an interesting one. A lot of people bought this product. They handed us over $1,500, sight unseen. They never saw it. They never touched it. Normal helmets, like, a normal good helmet's normal like helmet, 500? Yeah, five, around 500, between three and 800 bucks, yep. and depending on how much you value your head. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I think that the thing is, is that, you know, it's remarkable that we're in this climate and context right now where people will prepay a significant amount of money. And that was one of the biggest questions is from, from our investors was, will people pay the price, right. you know? And will they especially pay it up front without having ever touched or seen the product? Now, we did some small scale stuff where we allowed people to try on the helmet. So we actually, you know, have So, so you have the prototypes that do yes. all the stuff that yeah. we see here? Yeah. OK. So uh, and so we, we have these like local events, you know, and most of them are in San Francisco. And so uh, it's a very, you know, active riding community, yeah. the Bay Area Riders Forum. It's, it's an unfortunate acronym, BARF. Um, <laughs> But it, it's really... It's I knew we'd get vomit in here. <laughs> <laughs> I had to work it in. But, you know, I mean, it's, it's a really great thing. I mean, I think to give people the opportunity to experience so, the thing so, you, you made. So who's not going to buy it? I think the people that are unlikely to buy it are probably those... I mean, it, it kind of follows that early adopter curve pretty cleanly. What we've noticed is that uh, we had about 100,000 people who'd signed up as beta testers when we kicked off the campaign. So we knew that there was going to be some sort of conversion. Um, and then, you know, the biker in my office doesn't want it, interestingly, so I, I did a, a, little, a little focus group. It was one of, oh, okay. of, of the group, and he thought it was too much, and he was a little nervous that too much going on, and so I, on the way over here, figured out it's about an 11% increase in accidents. So even though it would save you from the accident you had with telephone and this and rear view and all the stuff that's going on, is that a little unnerving? And Will okay. it, does it, does it have to actually get approved by various states and regulatory? Yeah, so uh, this, is a, this is a welcome question. So I'm an industrial psychologist by training. We do research on intelligent transportation systems and human factors and how people make sense of their environments. The helmet has been designed to reduce net cognitive load. What that means is that it makes it essentially easier on your brain's processor to do what it takes to get from point A to point B safer. So you, you get a 180 degree viewing angle rear view camera that gives you a blind spot view. So you never have to take your eyes on the road to have 360 degree awareness, right? That's one. The other thing is that you've got turn by turn GPS navigation that's focused at infinity. So it's basically overlaid on your environment. You don't have to readjust your eyes to your smartphone on your dash and then back out at the horizon again. So this is the way that all heads up display 
GPS navigation will be done in the future is that we'll, we'll take telemetry like gauges, GPS navigation, we'll focus it at infinity because that's more natural for your brain and for your eye. Okay. Patents or taking common things and putting it all together in one package? Oh, I wish they were common things. That would have been so much easier. <laughs> But you're uh, glad that they're unique and that you patented. Right, yeah. So we have a, a growing suite of IP. Uh, we, we hired uh, the, the head of IP for, um, he was at Texas Instruments, but originally Xerox Park. And, so what uh, else besides been, motorcycle helmets? Where does the company go in terms of uh, futures? So, uh, ski helmets, so jet think, fighter helmets, and whatever. I think the most exciting thing is transcending helmets and really looking at how do we enable a, an intelligent transportation system. And so what we're most passionate about is using 802.11p as a communication platform and, and, and broadcasting our relative position to other drivers, right? So as people who own smartphones or own smart helmets or own smart anything, if we can broadcast a Wi-Fi 802.11p signal, we can broadcast our relative position and essentially in a transportation context, create a digital force field around the person in transport and so, so that I, other intelligent vehicles won't run into you.